this particular passage around a grain of wheat falling into the earth and dying in order to lose that outer shell. And this is the normal Christian life. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a victorious Christian life, but scripture gives us lots and lots of examples like the wilderness and the desert, an ark, Holy Saturday, in the belly of the whale, these places of transformation. And they're never something we would choose by ourselves <laughs> because in all ways they are a call to die, for something to die in order to be transformed. I've always been deeply touched by the picture of the cocoon, you know, and the, and the caterpillar, like our soul, somehow just knows when it's called to go to that place. It's not something we can manage. And because our spiritual life is circular, it's not linear, we will circle around those seasons of cocooning, of dying in the earth many times in our lives. Our whole life will be one big circle, but we'll have lots of little circles around the way. And in that, something indeed dies. It might be a way we think about something. We might, our theology might change over the years. It might be around, for me, I find <laughs> in those Dying seasons, it's usually another call to stop trying to manage myself, manage others, and even manage, try to manage God. It's a, usually a season of helplessness, even hopelessness. Romans 8 in the message has such a beautiful passage about waiting, that there's this waiting where... We can't even pray. The Spirit has to pray for us because we are just sighing a lot. Other words for that time, suffering, waiting, emptiness, limitation, and inner poverty. I was reading in a book I, I recommend by uh, Felina Hewart uh, called Pilgrimage of the Soul. And what I really love about her is so many books about transformation are written from a man's, a man's point of view. And she talks so beautifully about transformation from a woman's point of view, the different ways it could feel for a woman to be in this kind of cocooning phrase. And, in her book, she mentions that some scientists, National Geographic scientists, were able to use sound waves to record the noise that the caterpillar makes in the cocoon. I know, isn't that so fascinating? That this, it, and it makes me want to, it makes me a little weepy actually, because the crying and, and the pain is so deep. And the lamenting and the whimper, whimpering and the, crying. And that actually, that also gives me great comfort to not minimize myself when I'm in that place of transformation, that it is so painful and unnerving. Many writers compare it to that season of like that transition when a woman's about to have a baby. It's like, she's like, never mind, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, you're right on the edge of a new birth, but it feels like I can't go back and I don't want to go forward. And it's that Holy Saturday, that holding space. Um, and also in Felina's book, she mentions being at the birth of, a, of her sister-in-law, I think. And when the baby was being um, measured and weighed, she, she was kind of whimpering. And Felina asked the nurse, oh, I've never, I didn't know that a baby did that. And she said, oh yes, that, she's lamenting. She's lamenting that she is on the outside of the, of the safe cocoon. I thought, oh my goodness, I never heard that before. I thought it was really beautiful and just gave such a picture of what it feels like to be in that 
squished place about to come out. So um, what to do when you're in one of those seasons, right? Ah, I think it's like Holy Saturday, right? Between the cross and the resurrection, there's just a silent waiting. And if you have a friend who's in one of those seasons, wow, words are not helpful. <laughs> Perhaps some context, but I don't know, Andy, when you had your kids, was it like, I don't really want a lot of words in transition. I just want to lay here and um, be still until <laughs> the next movement occurs. Just quiet, holding, and waiting. So what we're going to do um, around that idea is, is I'm going to read this reflection like a lectio, which is kind of a holy reading. And I'm going to do it in, in a way like as a meal. Like first, I'm going to set the table, then select a morsel, taste and digest, the word becoming flesh, and then a savoring. So all in all, I'm going to read this reflection four times. Let's just begin with a moment of silence. Just why don't you just settle in, become silent and settled. Find a comfortable listening posture and allow your mind to come to rest in your heart. I like to feel my feet on the ground Feel my bottom in the chair. Know that this, the back of this chair is holding me. Lord, we ask for the grace to become present and available. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see you. And as I read this passage slowly and reflectively, that, so that was setting the table, now we're gonna select a morsel. Notice if there is a word or phrase that seems to capture your attention. After I read it, we'll sit in silence holding that word or phrase in the presence of the Lord. So as I read, just notice if there is a word or phrase that seems to capture your attention, that shimmers, some say. And then after I read it, we'll just hold that word or phrase in the presence of the Lord. And the stalk said, how does a grain of wheat feel as it is planted in the soil? To answer that, I imagine interviewing a stalk of wheat for every stalk was once a grain. Here's what the stalk might say. I liked being a grain of wheat. I was proud of who I was. Golden, smooth, perfectly intact. But then some farmer dug a hole and tossed me into it. What's going on, I asked. But my question was met with silence. Then the dirt came pouring down upon me. I protested, hey, you're burying me alive, stop. But no one heard me. I sat in total darkness, afraid. Then I felt something, moisture. At first I thought, good, I won't die of thirst. But soon I began to get soggy. I sensed my golden color was fading. My smooth exterior became wrinkly. My intactness was breached as I was split asunder. I whimpered. I'm dying. This is the end of me. Then something amazing happened. Out of my shriveled, broken, dying self, two shoots emerged. One began pushing upward, the other downward, both powered by a force within and beyond me. As my root went down, my shoot went up until it broke through the soil and into the brightness of the sun. I was no longer a grain of wheat, but something better, a stalk of wheat. From me would come forth many, many grains of wheat 
that would help feed the people of the world. In closing, the stalk said, trust the farmer, befriend silence and darkness, embrace transformation, willingly relinquish your intactness, believe, for the ending is really the beginning. If you have a phrase or word, go ahead and type it in the chat. If not, no worries. We're going to be reading it a few more times. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we've set the table. We've selected our morsel. Now we're going to taste and digest. As I read the passage again slowly, reflect on your word or phrase. What stirs in you? What stirs in you as you begin to digest this morsel? What do you see or hear with your holy imagination? What do you think or feel? Write about what is stirring in you. Be in no hurry. As you sit with your word or phrase and you Begin to take it into your body as you chew it. What do you see or hear, think or feel? Just write about what is stirring within you. I'm gonna read it again. How does a grain of wheat feel as it is planted in the soil? To answer that, I imagine interviewing a stalk of wheat for every stalk was once a grain. Here's what the stalk might say. I liked being a grain of wheat. I was proud of who I was. Golden, smooth, perfectly intact. But then some farmer dug a hole and tossed me into it. What's going on, I asked. But my question was met with silence. Then the dirt came pouring down upon me. I protested, hey, you're burying me alive, stop. But no one heard me. I sat in total darkness, afraid. Then I felt something, moisture. At first I thought, oh good, I won't die of thirst. But soon I began to get soggy. I sensed my golden color was fading. My smooth exterior became wrinkly. My intactness was breached as I was split asunder. I whimpered. I'm dying. This is the end of me. Then something amazing happened. Out of my shriveled, broken, dying self, two shoots emerged. One began pushing upward, the other downward, both powered by a force within and beyond me. As my root went down, my shoot went up until it broke through the soil and into the brightness of the sun. I was no longer a grain of wheat, but something better a stalk of wheat. From me would come forth many, many grains of wheat that would help feed the people of the world. 
In closing, the stalk said, trust the farmer, befriend silence and darkness, embrace transformation, willingly relinquish your intactness, believe, for the ending is really the beginning. So we've set the table, selected a morsel, chewed on it a little bit, and now we're gonna allow it to become a part of us, to become flesh. So as I read the passage one more time, and as you sit in silence, notice your desires and longings. Is there an invitation from Jesus? Notice your desires and longings. Do you recognize an invitation from Jesus? Write about your desires. How does a grain of wheat feel as it's planted in the soil? To answer that, I imagine interviewing a stalk of wheat, for every stalk was once a grain. Here's what the stalk might say. I liked being a grain of wheat. I was proud of who I was. Golden, smooth, perfectly intact. But then some farmer dug a hole and tossed me into it. What's going on, I asked. But my question was met with silence. Then the dirt came pouring down upon me. I protested. Hey, you're burying me alive, stop. But no one heard me. I sat in total darkness, afraid. And I felt something, moisture. At first I thought, good, I won't die of thirst. But soon I began to get soggy. I sensed my golden color was fading. My smooth exterior became wrinkly. My intactness was breached as I was split asunder. I whimpered, I'm dying. This is the end of me. Then something amazing happened. Out of my shriveled, broken, dying self, two shoots emerged. One began pushing upward, the other downward, both powered by a force within and beyond me. As my root went down, my shoot went up until it broke through the soil and into the brightness of the sun. I was no longer a grain of wheat, but something better, a stalk of wheat. From me would come forth many, many grains of wheat that would help feed the people of the world. In closing, the stalk said, trust the farmer, befriend silence and darkness, 
Embrace transformation. Willingly relinquish your intactness. Believe, for the ending is really the beginning. Notice your desires and longings. Do you recognize an invitation from Jesus? Write about your desires. So we've set the table, we've selected a morsel, we've tasted and digested, we've allowed it to become a part of us, become flesh, and now we're gonna savor. I just kind of imagine uh, just having a great Italian meal and kind of just sitting back and being like, oh, that's really so let's thank the Lord for what he's revealed to us and ask him for the grace to respond to his invitation faithfully in the days ahead. I'm going to read it one more time and just let it wash over you. Just savor it. Nothing to do or say. And then we'll share what invitations we sensed from the Lord. How does a grain of wheat feel as it is planted in the soil? To answer that, I imagine interviewing a stalk of wheat, for every stalk was once a grain. Here's what the stalk might say. I liked being a grain of wheat. I was proud of who I was. Golden, smooth, perfectly intact. But then some farmer dug a hole and tossed me into it. What's going on, I asked. But my question was met with silence. Then the dirt came pouring down upon me. I protested, hey, you're burying me alive, stop. But no one heard me. I sat in total darkness, afraid. Then I felt something, moisture. At first I thought, good, I won't die of thirst. But soon I began to get soggy. I sensed my golden color was fading. My smooth exterior became wrinkly. My intactness was breached as I was split asunder. I whimpered. I'm dying, this is the end of me. Then something amazing happened. Out of my shriveled, broken, dying self, two shoots emerged. One began pushing upward, 
the other downward, both powered by a force within and beyond me. As my root went down, my shoot went up until it broke through the soil and into the brightness of the sun. I was no longer a grain of wheat, but something better, a stalk of wheat. From me would come forth many, many grains of wheat that would help feed the people of the world. In closing, the stalk said, trust the farmer, befriend silence and darkness, embrace transformation, willingly relinquish your intactness, believe for the ending is really the beginning.